Prisma 6.9 just landed and there are some great new features that touch both Prisma ORM and Prisma Postgres. Why don't we start by taking a look at local Prisma Postgres and some changes there. So if we're in a project here, we don't have Prisma set up yet. We can do that like we typically would with npx Prisma init. But this time when we run this command at Prisma 6.9, we're going to get a local Prisma Postgres database all set up for us. What that looks like is this. We've got our environment file alongside our Prisma directory with our schema like we typically have. In in the .env file, we have got this database URL that points to localhost 51213, and this is a setup for using local Prisma Postgres. Previously, this would just be a Postgres database connection string that was stubbed out. Now we're making a connection to local PPG. So that's the connection string to use, but we have to actually go and start the local Prisma Postgres database, and that looks like this. We just run npx prisma dev. When we do that, we get this success message. So it looks like everything has come through. We have got our default database. It's listening on this port range, 51213 to 51215. And to elaborate on this a little bit, let's take a look at one of these optional commands here. Let's take a look at T for TCP URLs. And here's what we see. We are able to connect to the database directly. We've got a typical Postgres connection string, a TCP connection string. We've also got one to the shadow database. So here's the shadow database URL. And so for this setup for TCP, we've got port 51214 and port 51215 for the shadow database URL. All right, so let's take a look at H now, HTTP URL. And if we take a look at this one, we're going to localhost 51213 with an API key. So this is a different structure. This is over HTTP. This is how we would connect to Prisma Postgres remotely if we're used to doing that. But we've got options now, and it works locally if we're using a local Prisma Postgres in just the same way that it would work against a remote Prisma Postgres database. All right, so the key is in place. It's there in the environment file. Let's go and use this database now. We're going to leave it running in this terminal window and open up a new one. So let's go to the schema file, and we're going to put in some models here. Model user, let's start with that. We'll just have something stubbed out for us by cursor. We've got a post as well. Let's see, what do we have on this? I'm just going to save this, and we'll get our relation over here. We've got posts on the user. Post is coming through there. So now we can go ahead and run migrations. Let's do npx prisma migrate dev, and we'll give it a name, which can be init. All right, cool, so the database is in sync with the schema. So a very simple Prisma init call gives us the ability to get a local Prisma Postgres database, add some modeling, do a migration, we're all set up with local PPG, very simply. Now let's say we wanted to get a remote Prisma Postgres database instead of a local one when we do our initialization. Why don't we just run through that? We can take a look at how that works. It's really just the same thing, except we're going to pass a different flag. I'm going to just get rid of everything that got wired up here so that we can take a look fresh. Let's come back over to this terminal window. We have got this local PPG database. We're just going to quit out of this now. So let's quit out of that. We'll clear that away. Let's run this again, npx Prisma Nits, and this time we'll pass a dash dash db and this will allow us to look at something new in here as well so i'm going to hit enter on that so the first prompt here as always is which region we want to put our remote prisma postgres database in and what we'll notice here is that we've got a new region available we've got us west one which is san francisco northern california as stated here let's select that one to use the project name can just be my sfdb how about that and as before, we get an environment file for us here. We've got a database URL, this time pointing to the remote Prisma Postgres database. And this is using that new region that has been established at version 6.9 of Prisma. And if we take a look over here in the Prisma console, there's our new database. Let's click into here and we can see what else is new. We'll go to development. And now if we come up here and choose to connect to our database, let's click connect there. We've got some options here. So the options are connect with Prisma ORM. So that is the default behavior. That's what we've got over here, connecting through the environment file, expecting to use Prisma ORM. So a direct connection to accelerate, going straight to accelerate for our Prisma Postgres database. But in preview now is we can connect from any client by generating a set of credentials here. When we click to generate, we get a typical Postgres connection string. So this is going to work with any database client that supports Postgres. It's going to work with other libraries that we might want to use to call into our database as well. So now we've got the option direct to Prisma ORM or from any client with the direct connection string here over TCP. 
All right, let's take a look at something else new that is in the ORM here, and that is if we want to use the Rust-free version of Prisma ORM, so that's the ORM without the Rust binary, just straight up TypeScript, we've been able to use that, but it's been in early access until 6.9 where it is now in preview. So all of the known major issues have been taken care of, and you can have a lot more confidence going to use it. To opt into it, we need the preview features that are required for it, which are query compiler and driver adapters. We need these two. And what we do with it is this. Let's just save this. Let's get some modeling back in place. So model user, we can just have that one. That's fine. Let's actually run our migrations again because we are now connected to our remote database, npx prisma migrate dev name init. Okay, so that's all set up. We are migrated. So to make use of Prisma ORM with this Rust-free variety, we actually need to bring in an adapter. And so that looks like this. Let's npm install at Prisma slash adapter dash PG. So we've got this Postgres adapter, which can be used with Prisma ORM if we're using the Rust-free version. So we'll install that. All right, cool, so that's in place. And now the setup for using Prisma ORM for getting a new instance, it looks similar to what we would do before, but there are a couple other things that we've got to do, and that looks like this. Let's import our Prisma client just like we typically would, but instead of newing up a Prisma client in this fashion, let's first import the adapter bit, so Prisma PG from at Prisma slash adapter PG, that looks good. Let's now get a constant called adapter, and that is a new instance of Prisma PG. To it, we pass a connection string, and that's going to come from process.env.database URL, so the connection string is there. TypeScript is not happy right now with process, we need to install node types, that's fine for now though, we'll just ignore it. And then finally, we've got our Prisma instance, our Prisma client instance, to this we just pass in adapter. So a little bit more to do, but you're probably only doing this once in your application anyway, your Prisma client instance, you've probably got a singleton for it. So this is really not a whole lot of extra work to use the Rust-free version of Prisma ORM. So again, this was available before version 6.9 of Prisma, but it was in early access, whereas now it is in preview. All of the major issues have been shaken out, and we invite you to go and give it a shot. All right, why don't we wrap up by looking at something that's new in VS Code, and that is in the Prisma extension here for VS Code, we can now view our database directly in the editor. So let's try this. Let's sign in to get started to the Prisma data platform. I'm going to be prompted to go and open that. I'm going to say open. When we click through, we get this prompt. We want to be able to give it API access to a workspace of ours. So I'm going to say personal workspace. That's fine. Authorize Prisma Visual Studio Code extension and open Visual Studio Code. Then we can say allow the Prisma extension, that's fine, open it. So now we've got a list of what we have access to through our Prisma data platform account. And over here is that new database that we just created. So my SFDB, it's in US West one. We can click into here. We'll say create a connection string. And just like that, we've got Prisma Studio here all wired up directly in VS Code. That means we don't have to hop over to the browser to operate within Prisma Studio. We can just do so right here in VS Code. We can do all the things we would typically expect. We can insert a row, for example. We can sort, organize, filter, do all of the things that we might otherwise do with Prisma Studio in the browser. All right, so that's all to look at today for the new things in Prisma 6.9. We invite you to come check out the release notes. So this is at the Prisma repository in the Prisma org on GitHub. So github.com slash Prisma slash Prisma. Go to the release notes for version 6.9. You'll see the whole list here. And we invite you to try everything here. If you've got any feedback, we'd love to hear it. You can reach out to us on the web. We're at prisma.io or on x slash Twitter. We're at Prisma there. And we'd also love for you to join the discussion on Discord. We'll leave a link to that in the description below. And if you like this video and you want to see more updates and more Prisma content, we'd love if you'd hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.